Okay, welcome back to a new series. Welcome back to the channel. I guess I can't welcome you back to a new series. So welcome to a new series. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, so Baltimore Orioles, I just can't quit you. I'm going to do an Orioles thing here uh, where I started with 2021 uh, at the beginning of the season. And my goal is to get them into the playoffs by the end of 2022. I think I'm doing three seasons, and I feel like that's borderline believable, doable, that the Orioles could potentially, you know, depending on how their rebuild progresses in real life, potentially be a decent team by 2023. So I felt like me, you know, making way more trades than Michael Elias will make in real life, I could get them there by 2023. So I want to do it by 2022. It's not going to be easy at all. I think I'll probably fail, but let's, let's, uh, let's give it a whirl. One thing I did do is I retired Chris Davis. So I do have a little bit more money uh, left. I went into commission mode and, and, and retired him. I think that's fair. He retired and I know the Orioles are paying him some of that money over the next X number of years. Um, the next X number of years, say that five times fast. So I, you know, I know that's not a hundred percent realistic, uh, but, I, but I, I feel like it is more realistic than keeping him on the roster. So let's get into it. This team, this team's not very good. And this team is going to be in the postseason and next season, apparently. Uh, Chan Cisco is, I'm, I'm, let me say this. I'm going to go through the team real quick, give you my thoughts on it. Uh, this is totally unprepared remarks, kind of off the cuff, casual here as I try to figure out my plan. I'm going to take you guys through it with me. So Chan Cisco, I have no interest in keeping him around. Hopefully he can have some trade value. Uh, Severino, not much interest in keeping him around. Mountcastle, I think, is a guy who will be around. I think he could be my first baseman for this sim. I think that would be fine. Uh, Mancini is at DH. You know, I, I don't know how much love this game has for Trey Mancini. And, I, I you know, we'll see what we can get for him. I'm not sure if he's going to be around. Uh, Urias is probably not a second baseman on a playoff-bound team. Um, Michael Franco is not a third baseman on a playoff-bound team. You know, Freddie Galvis could be a third baseman maybe i know he doesn't have a third base rating i don't think he's a good enough hitter though so i don't think galvis is around for us next year austin hayes i think could be our left fielder i think that's fine to plan on hayes as our left fielder uh stevie wilkerson is not going to be around for us. santander we'll see how he plays out in this game you know this 2021 in real life was a rough season for santander after a good abbreviated season in 2020 and an okay 2019 uh, so we'll see what comes of him. Maybe we'll keep him around. Same thing with Mancini. Maybe we'll keep him around. Uh, of course, Cedric Mullins is missing from this. I'm assuming he's probably in Norfolk since this is before his breakout season. Yeah, he is. Uh, you know, 65 range. I would rather have a 70 or 75 range. I, I, I think maybe he could be like a fourth outfielder for me, and maybe he'll break out. Who knows? Uh, so pitching staff-wise, uh, it's ugly. It's horrendous. Uh, we've got John Means here who maybe could be a back-end starter for us on a decent team. And then after that, nope, Matt Harvey. Dean Kramer, we can try him out of the pen, I think. The fly balls are going to be a problem in Camden Yards. Jorge Lopez, no. Adam Plutko, uh-uh. Uh, Tanner Scott is a very good reliever, but possibly a very good trade piece for us. I mean, obviously he's like a lockdown reliever, but if I can get like multiple position players for him or a a really good position player back for him, I'll do that. Cesar Valdez, I think I've got some hope that possibly he can be a bullpen piece for us. Bruce Zimmerman, eh. Paul Fry, I think he can stick around. Cole Salser, uh, don't see much hope there. Max Scroller, very average. Tyler Wells, very average. Dylan Tate, uh, I, I, I can see, I can see it, I can see it. So then let's look at our top prospects. All oh, right, we're not at opening day yet, so it's not gonna have our top prospects here. So let me show you our top prospects this way um, by going to, let's go to the trade screen and look at it this way. So player trade and just look at our prospects here. Um, and let's look at it by potential. So Adley Rutschman is gonna be our catcher you know, the 65 catcher ability isn't amazing. Uh, I'd rather 70 or 75. We'll take it. 
Uh, I'll probably start him in double A and bump him up to triple triple A, and then he'll be up with us at some point this year. Certainly our opening day catcher next season when we're trying to do the thing. Uh, Grayson Rodriguez, hope I don't know if he's going to come along fast enough. Same thing with DL Hall. I think he's too far away. We'll see. Maybe they can contribute next year. This guy's obviously way far away. Yusnel Diaz, mm, I don't know if we have a role for him. Heston Kerstad, yeah, I think he's just too far away. Man, they really don't think much of him other than a home run hitter. Huh. He develops well in this game, though, from what I've seen in my sims. I think Kyle Stowers could be a potential impact player for us. Ryland Bannon, there might be a role for him to play on the bench. But there's not a lot here. Um, you know, Jamai Jones is a decent infielder. So some of these guys, you know, I think we've, I think basically, you know, we've got Rutschman, Mountcastle, Hayes, Santander, and maybe Mancini. So I think center field and shortstop are huge areas of need. I think you can't be a good team without a great fielding shortstop and a great fielding center fielder. And then pitching obviously is just a cluster. We're going to have to do something there. So the first thing I want to see is uh, just like, are there any good infielders out there that we could bring in sign them to like a two-year deal I'm, I'm guessing probably not um you know just in terms of like who these guys are yeah i mean some of these guys might be okay for this year but i'm not really that worried about this year i mean i'm sure we'll probably suck this year so it's all about kind of building for next year um but if there's a guy out there right now obviously We'll sign him now and try to bring him in for two years. But I just don't see anybody who's like an MLB level contributor out here. So, you know, we could also look at pitchers to see if there's anyone out there that we could maybe sign to a two year deal. Um, let's go ahead and look at pitching ratings. Like David Robertson, I know, is out there. Uh, let's go to the top of this list. Yeah, David. David Robertson is out there, who's obviously a good pitcher. You know, we've got some money to play with. You know, he could could he potentially be a back end arm for bullpen arm for us? I think I think he could be. Um, yeah, so that's that's one guy we could consider. I think Jake Thompson looks like a decent cheap starter. What I, what I think I might want to do with these guys and sign them to two year deals with next year being an option year. Um, and see how they do this year. Try them out in Camden Yard, see how that works for them. Uh, Salazar I'm not in love with because of this low movement in Camden Yard is an issue. Uh, he's fragile. He wants a good amount of money. Zach McAllister is like a decent bullpen, a decent looking bullpen arm. Addison Reed is out for four weeks, but a decent arm. Honestly, I think what I think I want to do to start is try to negotiate deals with Thompson and Roberts and to bring them in on two-year deals with an option. Like a one-year deal within a team option is, is what I mean. And maybe we can get them for like, what do you think about 2-7, David? And then your team option can be for three. And we'll give you... All right, sorry, I forgot that when I start messing around the keypad, some of this, the shortcuts in OBS then stop the recording. But anyways, uh, I was recording for a couple, thought I was recording there for a couple minutes where I wasn't. Uh, so David Robertson's not interested in a second year on this deal. Uh, Jake Thompson wanted a minor league deal with a $3 million contract uh, when promoted to the major league roster and the option for free agency if he wasn't promoted within 30 days. So I offered him... And, you know, I don't think Thompson's like a huge difference maker here, but I think we can roll the dice on a cheap arm like this and hope we catch lightning in a bottle. I uh, offered him two years. It's a uh, $1 million per year, but the second year is a team option with a $100,000 buyout. So that's what we've got going on for Jake Thompson. I think he could come in and, and, and be a decent pitcher for us over some of these nerds. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to mess around some more with this team and kind of maybe make some trades and come back and show you guys what we're working with. It's, it's going to be interesting because it's kind of like, well, we're not all in right now, and we also don't have many trade chips. You know, I guess I could trade away some of the players further down in the minors, um, but that doesn't really feel all that realistic to like be like, all right, well, Grayson Rodriguez isn't going to make it for me, so I'm going to trade him. Uh, you know, but I do have some guys down here 
who will probably not be difference makers for me. I just don't see any of those guys doing a thing for me. Uh, some of these guys, I suppose, could come up and be like role players for me. Or maybe, you know, maybe we'll have some breakouts. We, we need some breakouts. We do. But so I'm going to try to make the postseason by the end of 2022. Uh, you can see we are basically redoing this thing from the ground up. Uh, you know, of these pitchers, I don't know, maybe two <laughs> would be on our postseason roster next season if we made it. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll jump into it here and let's jump ahead and kind of I'll lay out more of a detailed vision for you guys. Okay, so been hard at work here in the warehouse uh, for the O's, trying to make some improvements on this team. I haven't pulled the trigger on any deals yet, but basically I went around looking for how I could uh, fix shortstop and center field for the next two seasons on a reasonable budget. Looked at second base as well, also looked at pitching. Pitching right now is hard to come by. Obviously, it's always kind of hard to trade for pitching, but uh, you know, hopefully as teams, as we move into the season and teams put players on the trading block and things like that, it'll become easier to acquire pitching. And maybe I'm paying a premium earlier in the season. In some ways, I feel like I am for the position players I'm trading for. Uh, you know, actually only one of them do I really feel like is uh, that steep of a price. But so I started looking around. Uh, I went to the MLB player list here and I was looking at uh, not left fielders, that's for sure, shortstops and their fielding ratings and just sorting by uh, infield range. And Ahmed was super expensive to get in a trade. Iglesias was super expensive. Lindor obviously isn't happening. Uh, but went down here, Miguel Rojas, who is one of the four shortstops of the 75, or five shortstops of the 75 range. And I found a deal for him that, uh, that I think I like. Um, Rojas is, you know, the 75 range is obviously his big thing is he is 32. He's 32. So a little older, uh, but he's under contract this year for 5 million next year, team option for 5.5. Um, and I also have Victor Victor Mesa, who I don't think is a major league player at all, but basically his outfield range just intrigued me. It seems like a good guy. Uh, you can never have too many guys with a 75 range. And while, you know, I'm not even sure he can hit in double a based on what my scout thinks, uh, OSA is a tiny bit higher. Uh, I figured it doesn't hurt because they were willing to throw him in for nothing. So the biggest piece we're giving up here is Chance Cisco, who really has attracted a lot of interest on the trade market. But I looked around um, and basically I think Rojas is the best player I can I can get while not giving up a lot more with Cisco. Because none you'll see in a minute, none of the other players I'm giving up are too steep of a price. I could you know, looking at packaging Cisco for like a number two starter or something just wasn't happening. I was still having to include way too much. So while Cisco is one of my better trade pieces and Rojas isn't like a superstar player by any stretch, he addresses a need and fills a need for us to hopefully make the postseason by next season, by 2022. So the other pieces I'm giving up are uh, Thomas Eshelman, who is a AAA pitcher who will probably, who, you know, he'd never pitch for me. So that's fine. Uh, Harrell, Harrell, Harrell Arias, uh, who's an 18 year old, maybe not a guy if I was doing a long term sim that I'd be looking to trade, although he's a fly ball pitcher, he only throws 91. Uh, but it looks like he has some decent potential, um, only rated a 25 overall, but these individual tools look pretty decent. Uh, maybe just a reliever if that change up probably, you know, change up probably won't develop. Uh, Michael Franco, who looks like a decent player here, but uh, I, he doesn't have any role on my team and doesn't really have any trade value on his own. So, and then T Taylor Davis, who is a uh, minor league catcher who has a different, decent catcher ability. Uh, so certainly I can see why the Marlins would be interested. So that would be the deal. And that would solve our shortstop problem for the next two seasons. So next I looked at center field. I'll go back to the player list again to show it to you guys that way before I show you the deal. Um, and I started by outfield range. Um, Pache, you know, is young and really good. You're not going to be able to get him right now. If you remember my Philly sim, I gave up a lot for him at the time. I don't think I have that kind of uh, trade capital with the O's. Uh, Bader was not available. Bradley Jr. was super expensive. Buxton was super expensive. Uh, so I started looking at 
Adam Engel, who's out for three to four weeks, and Almora Jr. Almora Jr., the price was still higher than I wanted to be. Uh, Engel is durable, even though he's, he's out now for three, he'll miss the first three weeks of the season. You know, no big deal. But he's arbitration, so he'll be around next season two and the 75 range is what we're looking at pretty light bat probably bottom batting in the bottom third of our lineup uh but if I click on the right tab here but I, I i like the deal for him where are the white socks there they are uh so i'd be giving up pat valeka who is a decent um i don't know why he's rated a 60 that's crazy um but so you know he's a decent middle infield guy but He's not very good with the glove. Like I think I can do better at second base with the glove. Uh, and so Adam Hall, who is an infield prospect who's just 21, um, who doesn't look great, uh, but you know, just not a guy that I see in my plans at the moment. So I'd be getting Angle, and I'll also be getting Cody Hewer, who looks like a really solid reliever, making the league minimum, super good movement and ground ball, which of course we like in Camden Yards. Uh, so that's that deal. And then I started digging around looking for a second baseman and I was surprised to see that I could get uh, David Fletcher from the Angels for a reasonable price um, and just for those wondering I can't remember if I said this earlier but I have the uh, I have the trade bumped up uh, one notch above uh, above the default and so Fletcher is a you know he's a good he's a really good second baseman I mean a 65 range uh, 75 air Double play and armor, both above average. He's got good work ethic, good intelligence. He's only 26, and he's under contract on a really cheap deal. So uh, Ramon Urias was the main guy they were interested in, who looks like, you know, if you squint hard enough, I can see a player that they maybe think is cheaper than Fletcher and getting back other pieces too who could adequately play second base for them. I don't see that. But uh, Jordan Westberg is an infield prospect. He was the Orioles' first round. Yeah, first round, 30th overall, like a supplemental pick in 2020. And looks like a decent player in real life, glove first guy. Uh, Nick Cufo, who it looks like a decent catcher, the 60 catcher ability. Um, so, But we don't need him. And then Keegan Aiken, who is an Orioles uh, real life pitching prospect. He was a first or second round pick in 2016. Uh, and he actually pitched for the O's in real life this year. And he he really struggled, but the last month and a half or so, he pitched pretty well for him. But extreme fly ball in Camden Yards in this game is just not going to work for me. Uh, so, you know, one thing I didn't look at is, like, is there something else I can get thrown in here um, in terms of, oh, they already have Jared Walsh is pretty good in this game. I was hoping maybe they, like, underrated him, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Um, Max Stassi has a decent catcher ability. Uh, so yeah, this is something I didn't do with them or, you know, Alex Claudio has really good movement. He doesn't have any stuff though. Oh, he's a free agent after the year too. I don't know. We could always see how he plays in Camden Yards. They're willing to put him in. I actually don't hate that deal given his really good movement. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to do anything else here. Nah, I don't want to add that salary. I think Claudio is actually a good add, uh, for basically nothing you know we're not giving up anything just paying a little salary uh and i'm basically just interested because of the ground ball because of the 75 movement might play well in camden yards my guess is that i don't bring him back but maybe he'll have a really good year maybe he'll mesh really well uh with the pitching coach or you know and we'll bring him back on a cheap deal so basically this will bring it will bring in two relievers claudio and hewer is it hewer the guy from the white Sox, and then fletcher angle and uh, then from the Marlins, oh, Victor Mesa, I forgot about him. Uh, also, Rojas to be our shortstop. So I feel like with this, we've solved, we'll solve second base, shortstop, and center field for the next two seasons. None of these players, you know, I mean, Fletcher's a solid player. The other two guys are not, uh, you know, maybe amazing. Rojas is a good player, but at 32, I'm a little concerned about him. But I think, you know, I, I think they're going to be plus players because of their defense. So. And then we can try to build out the offense around the other positions. So pitching is obviously still going to be a major concern. Uh, and we're going to have to address that moving forward. But I feel like this is some good progress. And so now I'm going to hop ahead here to opening day. After I'm going to complete these trades, get the roster ready, and then let's uh, take a look at the uh, opening day Orioles. Okay, here we are. Opening day, Thursday, April 1st, 2021. O's uh, predicted for 74 wins. 
so a little bit more than I think they would have been before our deals. So we're, we're, I think we're chipping away here at respectability. We probably only need to add like, you know, what another 20 wins before next season. Actually, the AL looks kind of weak this year. You could get a wild card with like, you could sneak into the wild card game with 85 wins. The Red Sox are the fifth best team here. Uh, so yeah, so I made those trades. Um, this is what our team looks like. Severino, Mountcastle, Fletcher, Ruiz, Rojas, Hayes, Mullins in center until Ang Angle's back, and then we'll see what happens. Santander and Mancini. Uh, pitching side of things, obviously a bit more of a mess, but we do have uh, Hewer is our closer. Claudio is a middle reliever, um, but the, you know, the rotation of Means, Kramer, Harvey, Wells, Lopez is just going to be bad. It's gonna be rough. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna have to do some things there. Uh, player development wise, our farm system is sixth. We've got uh, Rutschman, Grayson Rodriguez, D.O. Hall, and Dean Kramer cracking the top 100 here, um, which is interesting. He's a fly ball pitcher. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see here. <laughs> um, you know, other guys who might make uh, make some noise in our team. You know, Yusinel Diaz. Who knows? Maybe he'll hop onto the scene still. Uh, John Mai Jones has some versatility. Uh, he's a leader. Maybe he'll get some time with us. Ryan McKenna, uh, you know, if we get injuries, he could come up. Uh, Caden Grenier is a good glove first guy who's bad. I don't have um, much faith in. Uh, Taron Vavra is, is looks okay. Uh, Rylan Bannon, uh, you know, his bat looks all right. Tyler Nevin. A, a decent looking bat you know no stars here but certainly guys who if they have a you know like a pop-up type year uh possibly could come up and make a difference for us um you know not big difference makers but i think you know what i mean um so yeah so that's uh that's the squad moving into opening day uh just i haven't looked at the trading block yet to see if anybody's been added yeah some guys have been added so you know starter wise um you know, not really anybody here who I'm too interested in. Uh, you know, Gray is a free agent. Urena is a free agent after the year. So a bunch of guys on expiring deals, which is what you would expect. Matthew Boyd, that movement's not going to work for us. An extreme fly ball pitcher. Um, Batter-wise, um, Kurt Suzuki is a decent catcher. Nomar Mazzara, you know, not really adding anything to our squad. I don't, I don't really think there's a lot out here for us. I mean, CJ Crone obviously is a huge power bat, but not much beyond that. Um, so nothing really here that's going to be a game changer for us at this moment. I think, you know, my plan is to kind of play out this year a bit um, and I guess kind of figure out, you know, what to do with Mancini, what to do with my corner outfield, like who out of like the Hayes, Santander, Mullins, et cetera. Uh, guys are going to be around. Is Mountcastle going to be a difference maker for us? Uh, and we'll bring up Adley a little bit into the season, probably. And uh, pitching wise, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say about this. This is going to be a challenge to make this rotation even just competent. But hopefully, we can uh, work some magic here, and a year from now, be looking at a much different uh, pitching staff. So. I'm going to go ahead and hop forward here, I think, uh, for the next episode. I think probably pick it up maybe in July and see what's going on, see if there are any deals we're going to make. Um, we do have, oh, I, I, David Robertson did come back to us wanting to uh, reconsider. So, And for a much cheaper deal, we offered him two years, $3.5 million. Um, with $2 million being this year, $1.5 million next year as a team option with a $300,000 uh, team option. So I think, I think he would be a, a good addition to our, to our bullpen. Um, you can see here he is here. I, you know, I think this is a good pitcher, even at 35, who could make a difference for us in the back end of our bullpen the next two years at a, at a very reasonable price. So thanks as always for watching that. That'll do it for this episode. We'll see, uh, how the 2022 postseason robust Orioles are doing here about about at the halfway point through the season in the next episode.